What's going on guys? Welcome back to another Pokemon Unite video. Today, I bring you one of my favorite, favorite Pokemon in Pokemon Unite. I personally did not pick this Pokemon in um, Pokemon Sword and Shield, but definitely, definitely, definitely a uh, really good pickup here in uh, Pokemon Unite. So, I highly advise for you to uh, check this Pokemon out, especially because what makes this Pokemon so damn good is the fact that it's a range melee. Um, if you don't know about range melees, basically uh, your damage output, your you're just the ADC, you're the AD carry, you're just you're basically gonna be the one person that's a glass cannon, hands down. That's mainly what you're all about. Your whole intention is to wipe out the whole enemy team in a short period of time. And how do you do that? Well, that's what I'm here for. I'm here to break down how I play Cinderace. Why and why do I play Cinderace? Cinderace, it's... There's, there's not that many Pokemon in Pokemon Unite that have such a great movement. Cinderace tends to have... Um, one of the most fluid movements while attacking at least I feel like and um, here I'm gonna start breaking down what the Pokemon is and how uh, to capitalize on that so basic attack becomes a boosted attack with every third attack dealing increased damage when hit it hits so Urshifu, Urshifu vibes when the Pokemon uses a move its next basic attack becomes a boosted attack when the Pokemon hits an opposing Pokemon with a basic attack or move a cinder is placed on that opposing Pokemon stacks attacking a cinder opposing Pokemon a certain number of times will cause the cinder to flare dealing damage to the opposing Pokemon when the Pokemon with this ability is at half HP or less its critical hit rate and basic attack speeds are increased for a short time boom critical development so my upgrade for Ember, I always go with Pyroball. Yes, Pyroball <clears throat> may miss a lot, but the thing is, um, I like to keep my distance for just about everything. Um, yeah, you're really ultimately aiming to um, kite. If you don't know what the term kite means, basically you want to uh, uh, give the enemy uh, whether if it's a character or a NPC Pokemon that you're fighting in the jungle or whatnot, uh, a harder time to hit you while you're hitting it, and you're moving around to cancel his um, input attack. So basically, they're gonna basic attack you, and you move and you kite around that, and you understand the ranging and stuff like that. You can avoid getting hit by those Pokemon. Be mindful that uh, while you do that, certain Pokemon will reset and that may or may not be triggering. So heads up, learn how to do it properly and it will definitely make your experience a lot better. Also, and if you become an advanced, advanced level kiter, basically what that entails is that you're able to um, target like two Pokemon at the same time or three, depending on how good you really are. The reason why I don't pick uh, Blaze Kick, well look at the uh, cooldown first of all. And then on top of that, Blaze Kick is really very difficult to utilize on Cinderace, especially because you're really a damage dealer. The only reason why you want to use Blaze Kick is if you're snowballing heavily and um, you're really trying to close in the distance by getting closer. Um, and then you have Low Sweep and Faint. Personally, uh, um, Flame Charge and Faint from the upgrade version of Low Sweep. Personally, I go with Faint. Just because I find that everybody understands in my rank that I'm important. I make a lot of plays. <clears throat> I am the win condition most of the time. If I get fed, I can 1v5. Things of that nature. I am the condition of winning for the most part. And if I get behind, everybody will feel that. So, I go with faint. I personally like it just because you avoid all the CC. You can uh, avoid ultimates. Uh, you can really utilize it to avoid uh, really, really hard hitting damage, or you can just place yourself in a better spot, um, <clears throat> or get yourself in a better, like, you know, move away a little bit from the enemy, things of that nature, whatever, however you see fit. Um, that's what I personally like. 
I have made a lot of really, really pretty, pretty beautiful plays by avoiding people's ultimates. And most ultimates don't last more than two to three seconds, anywhere between that time frame for the most part, the Pokemon that I'm going up against. But there are some Pokemon that <clears throat> will do a uh, dot da damage um, or AoE damage that, you know, it takes a long, uh, longer for it to go on cooldown and it's still active. Um, those you got to be mindful. You got to actually time your faint um, in those situations. Like if you're about to kill them, um, but yet their ultimate is going off and they're going to kill you if you take one more hit. So then in that situation, you want to faint out of their range and try to kite them in that regard. And then that way you give yourself a little bit more time. Maybe your potion's about to be up. Maybe your teammates come in alongside you. Boom, faint. Um, ultimate move, Blazing Bicycle Kick. Has the user create a giant ball of flame and kick it towards the des designated location. The ball releases a fierce shockwave that deals damage to opposing Pokemon in the area of effect. This Unite move also increases the user's movement speed for a short time when it hits. So... <clears throat> this ultimate it's good and bad um i wouldn't say it's great i would say just good or bad um the reason why is because most of the time you're gonna be kiting into your enemy if you're about to kill them or kiting away it's only good in the case scenarios where they're running away and they're literally like about to die and you can do literally uh as long as you can you're in the they're in your range you can basically auto lock it boom they get killed if you're going up against a mirror matchup, you can faint this ultimate. You just got to time it right. Um, and today's health items that I'll be utilizing will be Muscle Band. When basic attacks hit the damage, is increased by 3% of the opposing Pokemon's remaining HP. I really like this. I mean, just any melee uh, Pokemon, I really just enjoy it just because of the fact that you want to be able to do damage to the enemy um, tanks. Uh, increase the damage of basic attacks critical hits the higher the Pokemon's attack the more damage increase <clears throat> so this does scale with the whole uh, blaze thing so you know obviously there are, um, let's just say that blaze lowers their defense or whatnot let's just say not on paper but let's just say hypothetically that's how it works so um, your damage output is gonna be increased and since your basic attacks are your you know highest hitting damage dealing um move this is just gonna stack on top of that which is ideal because well when you crit the crit damage gets added and boosted plus the crit rate at which your third empowered hit hits yeah that i mean you're just you're gonna have more rotations of your basic attack and uh on your third hit and honestly that's really really very very good especially for cinderace because you're really trying to kill them as soon as possible. Yeah, it might take like four to ten hits to kill somebody, but hey, four to ten hits is better than eight to fifteen or eight to twenty hits just because, you know, they're just too tanky or you're just not putting out enough damage. Um, <clears throat> and remember, during that time frame, they're trying to come to you. So if they're coming to you and you're hitting them and you're kiting properly, guess what? They're taking damage while they're trying to get close to you. And if they don't get close to you fast enough, guess what? They're going to start running away because they're going to realize, oh, snaps. Did I really just, like, take that much damage from him? Oh, wow. Um, yeah, no, let's uh, let's definitely run away from this this guy. He's definitely going to kill us. Boom. Uh, there you go. Razor Claw. Critical hit rate in attack. Plus 15. So, obviously more damage at the Pokemon uses the move a minimum of 20 damage is added to its next basic attack more damage output the higher the Pokemon's attack is the more its additional damage is increased when this item is additional uh, when items held by a melee Pokemon this additional damage also decreases the movement speed of opposing Pokemon for a short time <clears throat> so <clears throat> it's weird because Cinderace is a melee based Pokemon but he's not an up close melee based Pokemon. He's a range Pokemon. So, not sure if that was meant to be inputted, but uh, I do end up slowing a lot of the uh, enemy team. So, there you go, guys. That's my current uh, items that I have for Cinderace. Let's hope and pray that um, I can get myself into a match. And for Cinderace. <clears throat> 
I typically go for, I believe it's called Bruiser. Oh, not Bruiser. Where is it? Beater. I'm pretty sure. It's a terrible name. Don't, don't, just don't. Um, I don't condone uh, abusing, <laughs> unless if it's other Pokemon um, in game. Um, attack plus 9.2 current effects. Uh, like I mentioned before, these numbers aren't really the numbers that you should be looking for. Whenever it comes to boost emblems, it's really the percentile uh, increase on this because 4% attack is way greater than uh, 2%. Like it just, the numbers are crazy. Uh, if you do the, the numbers and stuff like that, you know, you can go ahead and let me know. Uh, but I just know that whenever I build mainly off of the current effects inside the middle, it didn't really um, bring me satisfaction. And uh, it took a lot longer to kill Pokemon. But once I adjusted to make this, it really uh, helped out a lot. And I am probably going to be updating this soon. And just because I haven't played Cinderace in a minute. Um, I've been playing a lot of Urshifu. So, yeah. Um, and I'll let y'all know what I do end up changing my emblems to. So, plus 2% basic attack speed. This is obviously ideal. Um, and then we have uh, plus 2 defense. It does come in clutch. Trust me, you don't like facing uh, a Snorlax. Obviously, there's no bonus here. Um, you don't want to face a Snorlax and get killed by a Snorlax. Yeah, it's not pretty. So, that plus 2%, mm, it's not a huge drastic change, but it definitely is um, a good uh, bonus, you know? Just because, I mean, that 2% can really come in clutch sometimes. <laughs> So let's go ahead and see I'm need to I need to change my build there. So I need to change that to beater. <clears throat> you can either go for X attack or you can go for like potion, X speed, eject, full heal, slow smoke would be cool. <clears throat> um yeah, there's just a lot of different ways that you can go about this. Um I like X attack because it does increase attack speed. Um, in this regard, I should definitely take potion because I don't have anybody who can heal me. Yeah, let's go with that. <clears throat> so this way we can actually be um, in lane for a little bit longer than anticipated. Um, or that more longer than... Um, the enemy team anticipates because you know they won't be able to take tower if I'm there um, depending on how they they play this is a really very 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 difficult matchup for us <clears throat> slow bro busted Tyranitar busted Charizard busted Gengar yeah let's just stop there <clears throat> they're all pretty much really really strong um, I may or may not be able to capitalize on what exactly uh, I want to showcase, but I will definitely try. And as you can see, Urshifu has eject button, so he's obviously going to be getting on us. Um, Gengar is really just trying to scale as quickly as possible because he knows he can snowball once he becomes Gengar. He's probably going to go ch uh, Shadow Ball build. I don't personally like Shadow Ball build. I prefer Hex and Sludge Bomb. <laughs> That's just me and my preference. Charizard is going to be all up in your uh, butt cheeks, um, <laughs> as you can see with that uh, speed item. Um, so let's try to... Uh, let's try to get as much as possible here. Let's really try to evolve as ASAP. Uh, this is going to be very difficult if he takes all the farm. I mean, if he goes and makes it great, as long as he does a seed, then I support it. That's good. Here, I'm just really trying to... And then here, I want to get close to do some damage. Yeah, I'm not surprised that he, he uh, goes down there. Um, but really, he's going to snowball, if I'm not mistaken. I'm pretty sure that the trio has items that uh, boost his uh, damage, so he's really probably going to aim for late game. So hopefully we can at least make it to late game. 
if you're liking the video, uh, please do let me know. Um, I really, really enjoy playing this game a lot. Uh, this might be bad. Okay, good. Here, I'm just really ch hoping I can get as much of this as possible. It's very difficult to be uh, char uh, Charmillion right now. He's just, he's just a little bit stronger in my uh, in my belief. He's a little bit of a thicker boy. All right, he bombed. <clears throat> yeah, I just, I can't get away from that. Um, I wonder if I can, I don't think I can actually. <clears throat> I need to remove that dial. I don't use it. Um, at least I got used to not using it anymore. Um, I used to use it for Cinderace a lot, so I can specifically target whoever I want. Um, yeah, but I hope, hopefully we can scale. Oof. Oh, this is uh, Took that from him. And we can possibly kill Char Charmillion as long as he doesn't evolve here. Here we're just trying to really um, apply as much pressure as possible. apply as much pressure as possible to make sure that uh, uh, <clears throat> Charmeleon doesn't, you know, we're taking advantage of the fact that he's not a Charizard yet. Um, come on. Just trying to take advantage of the fact that he's not a Charizard yet. That's literally what it is. That's what it boils down to. Because as soon as uh, you beat, um, as soon as you're like beating them in lane, uh, Charmeleon has a hard time up until he becomes Charizard. And once he becomes a Charizard, he actually becomes a uh, Pokemon, like an actual completed Pokemon. Because it's really hard to deal with as Charizard. He kind of becomes like a talent flame, just a lot more tankier in the regard of just, a, just, just in general. Because talent flame, the only reason he's not really tanky, he's more like he's evasive, which isn't really the same thing. Yeah, I needed a. Yeah, he would have died there if I didn't, if I wasn't there. Charmeleon. Okay. Damn, he healed too much, and they went for the Charmeleon instead of Tyranitar, which is very unfortunate because they should have gone for uh, Tyranitar. And now we're gonna, we might actually lose this just because of that. That's tough. <clears throat> That's very crucial. Um, yeah, because now we're gonna lose Bot Tower and. Oh, wait. Okay, not bad. Good shit. <clears throat> Let's go. Uh, so as I mentioned, I really, um, I needed to faint that just because the dark post would have done a lot of damage um, here. Luckily, this Urshifu doesn't watch my videos, otherwise he would know. How to properly play our Shifu and how to actually uh, which type to play as. <clears throat> we should have put a, a little bit more attention as um, which typing to pick for this matchup. Uh, the Charizard, hopefully. 
Tyranitar, he's still so busted. Oh my god, I didn't even see him. <sighs> yeah, we lose by default. Um, because they're all just strong late game. Hopefully, this Gengar gets killed. If he gets killed, that's really, really good. At this point, it's really just a matter of picking them off and. Actually putting in the work. I want to pop my potion here so I can put it on cooldown and I can be a little bit higher uh, in health. Um, I gotta actually be top lane in these circumstances. This Venusaur might die. I just want to be present for this fight. I just literally dodged everything there. Um, gotta just kill him. I don't care if I waste ultimate there. Uh, shutting them down before he kills anybody on my team is really really good um, 15 seconds the, the the death timer isn't that high yet. It would have been nice if uh, Oh, he just used it. Oh Man, he's too far though. That's unfortunate the final uh, We need to pick somebody off Tyranitar perfect. Yeah, all of them are really sweepers to be honest. Uh, I don't think we should have. Uh, he's using an ultimate. Oh, this sucks. Yeah, this sucks. Uh, damn, what is that? That sucks. That's that's pretty much GG. <clears throat> uh, the search tool wasn't all that good either. I just we had a Dutch trio, and the trio couldn't capitalize or put out enough damage <clears throat> that's tough I wish I had my ultimate available because with my ultimate I would have been able to uh, at least dodge some damage and I probably would have killed them if we lost we just lose by default here no matter how much how well we can defend they're just too strong to def uh they're just too strong to, uh, with the, sh especially with the shield. What a goal! Wow, what a goal! There. What a goal! Yeah, there's nothing I can do. It's too tanky. What a goal! <clears throat> That's very unfortunate, but um, hopefully y'all uh, pick something up from this. Really, it's just a matter of matchup. The site there wasn't like. In this situation, I think Scyther there should have played as Scizor to be a little bit more tankier so he can be a frontline. Venusaur, I didn't really see any uh, major. Um, anything major from him. I can't even like do anything to this Tyranitar. And it sucks. Time's up! And I'm in my own base, and it sucks. Uh, so, <clears throat> let me break this down. Um, that way, at least y'all can y'all can understand how we lost that and things of that nature for those who are still learning the game. So, as you can see, we severely lost there. Um, and the reason the reason being is because of the fact that wait, let's go to the battle uh, battle data real quick. So, 50,000 damage taken, recovery. Ideally, um, I believe late game it was Scyther, not Scizor. If he would have been Scizor, um, yeah, he might have been a little bit slower, but he would have been a little bit tankier, which is what we honestly needed, because uh, everybody was getting slaughtered, um, as far as I noticed. 
this the trio he did okay as far as in terms of putting up uh, putting pressure but for the fact that it's a 5v4 because as you can see Slowbro has no pressure wasn't even existent in the game it's just it's just mind-boggling um, Sylveon put in a little bit of work as you can see uh, Venusaur did nothing either non-existent <clears throat> um, I mean, he soaked up damage, but Dachio's not meant to soak up damage. Mm. I mean, in this game, I think that the only people that really played good... Actually, nobody really played good, if you think about it. Because Urshifu, he got away with the game, even though he didn't deserve to win. Gengar, he's just a Gengar. He just scaled late game, so it didn't really matter. As long as we made they made it to late game, they were going to win by default. Charizard... You saw what the matchup was like during lane. Um, Tyranitar, once again, another busted Pokemon that really um, got rewarded by just making it through the end of the game. Um, Slowbro, I didn't even see anything on him. Um, I feel like Slowbro probably did better than our Venusaur, but I don't even know if he was playing because I don't, I don't think I saw uh, Slowbro at any given time. Um, but as you can see, my damage, 73k, um, I took 46,000 damage, um, yeah, most of that was probably towards the end of the game, um, I didn't really die a lot, as you notice, I was kiting, I was basically playing everything as passive, but aggressive at the same time, that's the beauty about Cinderace, um, <clears throat> yeah, it's unfortunate, but it is what it is, guys, hopefully y'all learned something from this matchup, uh, you don't win them all. That's why I've been playing Urshifu because with Urshifu, I'm tanky. I can basically cater to any uh, level of uh, lane, essentially. So I can either be a top laner, I can be a jungler, I can be just about anything. I'll be well-rounded. Um, yeah, so I'm going to be making adjustments to the Cinderace build. Um, so maybe in the next video, I may be putting out a Cinderace build updated um build with the new meta because of the fact that um the last time that i adjusted cinderace and was playing cinderace a lot was prior to urshifu's release so just to put it in perspective i used to run that and i used to win all of my matches for the most part the only times i ever lost and got pooped on was when my teams kept on feeding and they overextended and I couldn't do anything about it because they just had too much CC. But yeah guys, that's how you um, that's how I play Cinderace in lane. And that's how you poop in uh, poop on people on in lane in regards to like a Charizard. And I personally feel like Charizard is a way better uh, Pokemon overall just because he is a little bit more capable of dodging a lot of damage, unnecessary damage. He's normally People don't go for a Charizard first. They typically go for a Cinderace first for obvious reasons. So yeah, guys. Um, GG's. Hopefully I enjoyed that. If you uh, if you want to catch me online, maybe see my face, my beautiful, beautiful face. You can catch me on Twitch, dash Easy Um And yeah, maybe maybe you can suggest something in the in the messages. So let me know, comment down below, let me know what you think of my gameplay, let me know what you think I could have done better, tell me what uh, you would recommend, and let's see if, how close that is to the new and improved build that I make. But yeah guys, thank you for being here, I really appreciate y'all, I had a lot of fun in this matchup, uh, so don't be toxic, be flexible, be capable, and just... Pray and hope that you actually get a good teammate when you're solo queuing. Good luck, guys.